Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In today's session, we will discuss idle service lifecycle in detail. By the end of this video, you will completely understand the idle service lifecycle and the various phases in the service lifecycle. So do watch the video till the very end. Before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. We will start the session by talking about what exactly is idle service lifecycle. Then discuss the various phases in the idle service lifecycle, idle service strategy, idle service design, idle service transition, idle service operation, and idle continual service improvement. So, I hope the agenda for today's session is clear. And guys, if you like our video, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also hit the notification bell to never miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, if you are looking for an online training certification in IDIL, check out the link given in the description box below. So, now starting with our first topic for today, what exactly is the IDIL service lifecycle? The IDIL service lifecycle is a method for implementing the best practices outlined in the IDIL framework. An exceptionally large number of organizations are dependent on IDIL 4 methodologies to deliver IT services. In addition, the quickly increasing demand for cloud and big data strategies within organizations has also significantly hiked the demand for this framework. So, the service lifecycle approach to IT service management emphasizes the need for coordination and control across the numerous activities, processes, and technologies required to manage the entire lifecycle of IT services. The service lifecycle method includes factors like IT service strategy, design, transfer, operation, and continuous improvement. They are strategic, focusing on the implementation of a whole stage of the idle service lifecycle. The service lifecycle is being divided into five phases which are service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation, and continual service improvement. Now, let us discuss in detail one after another. Starting with service strategy, the idle service strategy explains how IT services will help IT meet its objectives. It also demonstrates how IT services support a company's overall strategy. The major goal of the idle service lifecycle service strategy stage is to establish a service provider's perspective, position, plan, and patterns in order to satisfy the organization's business objectives. The idle service strategy explains how IT services will be used to help IT meet its objectives. It also demonstrates how IT services support a company's strategy. The service strategy stage objectives of the idle life cycle involve providing the service provider with the following. Having a good knowledge of what exactly strategy is. Next, understanding the organizational capabilities needed to carry out the service plan. Next, a detailed description of the services it offers and the individuals who utilize them and a clear statement regarding the creation, funding, and delivery of services, as well as the services target users and how each service adds value and finally, a comprehensive understanding of which service assets are used to deliver each value and how to improve their performance. These were some of the objectives of the service strategy. Now, Talking about some of the advantages obtained by the adoption and implementation of service strategy best practice is. First is, an improved capacity to understand and communicate the connections between the service provider's IT assets, operations, and the critical outcomes accomplished by its customers as a result of using their services. The next advantage is, it has a flexible and timely capacity to change its IT services to take preventive steps and meet changing company demands, resulting in a longer-term competitive advantage. Next, by its company and consumers, the service provider is perceived as contributing to value and cost. Next, it provides a maintained portfolio of qualified services. And the next advantage is it provides improved IT investment use, with service development investments driven primarily by business goals and a thorough ROI analysis. So this was about idle service strategy. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the idle service lifecycle phase, idle service design. Service design is the stage of the life cycle where a service strategy is converted into a plan for achieving the organization's goals. For services to bring actual value to the business, they must be created with the business aim in mind. 
IDLE Service Design is a set of guidelines for developing and designing services and service management processes. It also includes design ideas and strategies for translating strategic goals into service portfolios and assets. If service design is good, then there is a possibility to deliver services that are of both high quality and cost effective. It also ensures that the business requirements are being met. Now, talking about the objectives of the service design stage of the idle life cycle. It involves the following. The first is to design IT services that are so efficient that only minor improvements are required during their entire lives. Next, to include CSI into all aspects of service design to ensure that solutions improve over time and to identify altering patterns to keep a lookout for investment possibilities. These were some of the objectives of the service design stage. Next, talking about the benefits of the service design stage are. It reduces the total cost of ownership, also called TCO. Next, it enhances service quality, dependability, and performance greatly, and it simplifies the introduction of new services or the modification of current ones. The next benefit is it aids in the improvement of IT governance, and it also improves the efficiency of IT and service management procedures, and mostly it enhances the ability to make decisions. This was about idle service design. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the next idle service lifecycle phase, which is idle service transition. Idle service transition is responsible for putting new services and changes into operation. The service knowledge management system is also introduced in idle service transition, which has the capacity to enhance organizational learning and help in improving the effectiveness and efficiency of all phases of the service lifecycle. This benefits individuals by allowing them to benefit from the expertise and experience of others, as well as assisting decision-making and improving service management. The primary goal of the service transition stage of the service lifecycle is to ensure that new, updated, or discontinued services match the business's objectives previously agreed upon in the service strategy and service design stage of the idle lifecycle. Talking about the objectives of idle service transition. The first is to efficiently and effectively plan and manage service modifications. Next, to control the risks associated with new, modified, or cancelled services, and then next, to deploy the service releases into environments that are capable of supporting them. The next objective is to establish reasonable expectations for the performance and use of new or modified services and to ensure that the service modifications provide the intended business benefit and finally, the objective is to give the knowledge and information about services and service assets that are required. Next, talking about some of the advantages or benefits of idle service transition. It allows us to estimate better the costs, the services timeline, the resources necessary for execution, and the risks associated. Next, the number of successful changes is on the rise. The next benefit is, its goal is to decrease delays caused by unforeseen conflicts and dependencies. Next, it reduces the amount of time and effort required to manage test and pilot environments, and it improves the expectation for all the stakeholders. The next benefit is it assures that freshly launched or updated services are simple to maintain and cost-effective in the long term, and it also provides better control over the various service assets and settings. So this was idle service transition. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the next idle service lifecycle phase, which is idle service operation. IT service operations are made up of activities, infrastructure, and processes that give value to organizations via the use of technology on a regular basis. The objective of idle service operation are. The main objective of IT service operations is to guarantee that the essential IT services are supplied quickly and effectively to business users and customers in accordance with service level agreements. Next, service operations are essential for a business since poorly executed procedures will render precisely conceived and implemented processes useless. Next, service operation also helps in the improvement of the service by consistently doing periodic tasks such as performance monitoring, assessment metrics, and data collection. Each level of the idle service lifecycle offers value to the company involved. Service strategy, service design, and service transition all play important roles in giving value to a service, but the real value imparted is only obvious during the service operation stage. Service operation processes such as incident management, event management, problem management, 
access management, and request fulfillment make the values accessible. So, there are five processes under idle service operation. Let us talk in brief about the five processes. First is event management. The term event management refers to the process of managing an event over its entire life cycle. It involves detecting events, filtering them, responding to them, and logging them in order to keep track of them. Next is incident management. It is focused on efficiently restoring disrupted services and bringing them to normal operating levels in order to reduce the impact of the interruption on the business. The third is problem management. Problem management includes determining the root cause of incidents and taking proactive actions to guarantee that they do not happen again. Fourth is request fulfillment. It handles service requests, which are small, low-risk changes like creating new user IDs, changing passwords, and so on, that aren't part of a company's main operation. And the fifth one is access management. Access management is concerned with allowing only authorized users to access a service and preventing unauthorized users from accessing them. So, this was about idle service operation. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the next idle service lifecycle phase, which is idle continual service improvement. Idle continual service improvement is a sort of procedure that uses quality management approaches to learn from previous successes and mistakes in order to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of IT services and processes over time. The objective of idle continual service improvement is increasing the IT services cost effectiveness and process efficiency. Next, in each phase of the service lifecycle, such as service strategy, service design, service transition, and service operation, review, analyze, and provide recommendations to improve the current opportunities. Next, determine and implement initiatives to improve the efficacy and efficiency of the IT service management process while also increasing the quality of the IT service and making IT service delivery more cost-effective while retaining the same level of client satisfaction. Next, to guarantee that a standard and appropriate technique for quality management is implemented. So these were the primary objectives of idle continual service operation. There are four processes under idle continual service operation. Let us talk in brief about the four processes. First is, service review. The objective of this step is to evaluate the infrastructure and business services on a regular basis. A service review also tries to improve service quality where it is needed and to develop cost-effective alternatives to provide a service. Second is, process evaluation. The objective is to conduct frequent evaluations of IT procedures. Its aim is to discover areas where the planned process metrics have not been fulfilled, as well as to conduct frequent audits, benchmarks, evaluations, and reviews. The third is the definition of CSI initiatives. The goal of this process is to identify specific initiatives aimed at improving services and processes based on the findings of service reviews and process evaluations. The initiatives that emerge as a result of this are either ones that require customer cooperation or are internal initiatives that the service provider is pursuing. Fourth is monitoring CSI initiatives. The objective of this process is to check the improvement initiatives and verify if they are proceeding as per the plan. If they aren't, then it aims to implement corrections wherever required. So, this was about idle continual service operation and idle service life cycle, and with this, we have come to an end of this video. Do leave your valuable thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.